Yes. Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We would love to introduce our speaker today, Iana Walker. And Iana is a dear friend of mine and a huge supporter of Fourth Trimester Arizona. So I have to shout out that first. Iana is probably uh, a lot of the reason why Fourth Trimester exists, whether she recognizes it or not. Um, she has been a huge support and cheerleader and everything. So I'm just so delighted that we're able to have her with us today. Um, but Iana um, has been on a journey to loving her body for years. She's made it her mission to pave the way and be an example for all women to love and connect with themselves. In our society that often asks women and girls to sit down and stay quiet, she found herself negatively framing who she was and how she expressed herself. In early 2020 and after birthing three children, she was able to reframe how she viewed herself and take on a different and more empowering conversation about her body. We're so excited to have her joining us today in the central fourth trimester village. So welcome, Iana. Thank you so much for being here today. It is my pleasure. I'm super excited. Um, I love all of you. <laughs> Sarah, you're just doing the most. <laughs> It's okay. It's all good. I so appreciate it. And I definitely love the fourth trimester and all it's offered me um, and that recognition and support after I had my babies. It was greatly instrumental in me um, not having postpartum depression for my third daughter. Um, so, you know, like just having that community, having support is so vital to women in general. So thank you for creating this. Oh, thank you. Okay, now I'm I'm gonna cry most of this, so I <laughs> just just now I'm a very emotional person. Uh, so could you allow me to share my screen so we can get started? Absolutely. I love you, Liana. No. <laughs> I love you. Have gone on our website or <laughs> or looked at our programs from the past years. That was Liana and her amazing husband who have greatly contributed to the look and everything that is public facing in fourth trimester. So yeah. <laughs> Indeed. All right, I think you should be able to share now. There we go. Looks like I can. Okay, cool. How fun. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so my name is Iana Walker. I call myself the queen of desire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and I started the business, uh, my business is called Desiring Me last year to teach women how to be the primary beneficiary of their sexuality. Um, like, the, so like Jenny and Sarah said, um, for years, women really, we have been taught, honestly, that our body is not ours. Okay, we have to save them for somebody else for cover up or we're subject to the male gaze. And then the consequences thereof, like society really has not allowed women to just be in their bodies. Um, so my mission today is really to remind you that your body is yours, okay? Your body is yours to love, it's yours to understand, it's yours to be the miracle that you are. So um, we did a little bit of intro, but I'll do it again for Facebook. Um, I am a mother, I have three beautiful young ladies. I'm a wife. I've been married to my husband for 13 years and I've been with him for 20 and I can honestly say this year is the first year we have been genuinely happy, <laughs> genuinely happy, um, which if you know anything about my story and my, my path, which I'll share a little bit about, um, it's been a trap, it's been, it's been rough, <laughs> okay, um, but so beautiful. And so it's me. So I wanna, oh, I missed that. <laughs> but anyway, there's my family <laughs> and there's me my littlest, who's now three. This is what she was about one here. Okay, so I have a few notes before we begin, just some disclaimers. Um, I'm not a licensed therapist. I, am, I have had um, lots of personal development and personal development around helping people, but I'm not a trained licensed therapist with formal trauma training. And um, I know some people have had serious issues related to their body image, um, people going through things like disordered eating, um, you know, just uh, severe depression and anxiety around the body image. And um, I do want to encourage you if you do have or find something that's triggering or you're not able to process 
that you please seek professional help. And also, I just put this in here because we are all women in this group. And um, because of that, I will be speaking in primarily gender binary terms. Most of, the, of us have wombs, have had children. And if you identify as anything other than she or her, I just wanna let you know I am sensitive to that, but I just will be communicating in those terms. It's a very, you know, sensitive culture right now. So there's a little bit about my body journey, okay? Um, so I developed early, this picture on the left um, is me at, I think 16, but I actually got breasts at age nine and by age 10, I was comparing them to other women, to other girls. Like my boobs are bigger than yours, like very flouting. Like I don't even know where I learned that from, okay? But that comparison was there as early as 10. And that is the case for most girls. Even my kids, I noticed them, them doing this and being ashamed or having issues related to their body that just appear, okay? It's, it's really... Um, it hurts my heart a lot. <laughs> um, I, in high school, was um, a dancer and we had to wear full body leotards and you can't hide anything. Literally every curve, bump, dimple, whatever was there. And I was the biggest, like width wise, and you can see in this picture, my friend's not sucking her belly in, but I was, okay? I was the thickest, I had the biggest boobs. I'm like, my hips curved in. They don't go like that. Like I was self-conscious, like every day, just comparing myself to other women. Um, and then in high school, I like gained the freshman, I'm not high school, college. I gained the freshman 30. They call it 15, but I gained 30, <laughs> okay. Um, because I, I live literally right across from the dining hall and I had uh, unlimited food, you know, and it was a huge adjustment for me. So um, I gained a lot of weight then. Um, and then I was pregnant probably uh, two years after I, I went to college with my first daughter. And I remember being pregnant with her and being so worried that I would go over 200 pounds. Like 200 pounds to me was like, that was so fat and disgusting. And I literally in the hospital weight 199. And I was like, whew, thank goodness. <laughs> like, I missed the boat. I didn't go there. Like we, I, I'm saved. I've lost the baby weight. It's good. I'm not getting the 200 pounds. Like that was really, I don't, I don't know. I don't know where that came from. I don't know why that, that number was such a, a big, important thing to not have, but that was the case for me. Um, and then I lost that weight through breastfeeding and belly dancing, which is really powerful and ended up pregnant again with my second daughter. No real um, weight issues that I felt then I was pretty I was a lot slimmer that time so I didn't get up that high um, but then I got pregnant a third time and I had a miscarriage that left me massively devastated um, I went into probably the worst depression of my life and that's one thing I feel like um, as women we we are still trying to have this conversation around miscarriage and that miscarriage and people who've experienced that do go into a fourth trimester they do still have the hormones of having that baby and losing them. And uh, I was in a state of depression for two years after that. Oh my gosh, I told you guys, I'm really gonna cry this whole time. <laughs> uh, but that was a period of massive weight gain for me. And that's what this um, second picture is. It was actually at Disney World and I was like 230 pounds. This is probably um, four or five months after that miscarriage. And this was, I saw this picture of myself and I was just, devastated somebody else took it and posted on Facebook and I was like uh I look disgusting <laughs> um and so from then I, I did go on to have another baby and ultimately several things contributed to how I started to love my body but um in reality it was a, a long long road loving yourself is not going to happen overnight it it will not happen overnight, um, but it is completely possible, you know? Um, so yeah, whew, I'm cool off. <laughs> All right, so 
Uh, we talked about that. How did we get here as a society? Um, this is a, a old school Barbie, okay? Um, and I don't know if I can, oh, look, hold on. I'm gonna pop the chat out so I can see what people are saying. Okay. Anyway, um, this is an old school Barbie. And honestly, it's kind of the ideal, uh, what society deems is the ideal body. It's our society kind of values or puts um, more weight in being white, being skinny, and being young. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, and, and it's crazy that even though these ideals change over time, like this is still essentially what everyone is striving for. This is people who do skin lightning. Um, why, you know, literally self-hate is a multi-billion dollar industry. <laughs> um, so I want to know, like, just to, if you, if you're open to sharing, like, how did you get here? Like, what is your body journey or what has society told you that you may have taken on for yourself? You can pop it in the chat or you can, you know, hop on a chat really quick if you'd like. I think, I'm oh, sorry, if somebody else wanted to say something, go ahead. Um, I'll join on. For me, because I think I actually um, have like body dysmorphia, but it's not technically diagnosed, but I think I really do struggle with that in the sense that, you know, what I see is a lot more emphasized than what others see of me. Um, so I think I can remember it from very early on, like Iana was saying, you know, when I was little, I think it, in school, um, I was a late developer and other people were a lot sooner than me. And I was always comparing, you know, like, oh, why don't I have boobs? Why are they better? You know, back then it was, you know, like your lips had to be a certain size to be pretty or your butt or, you know, whatever. And so it started really early on for me, I think with, with that body image and lack of self-love. And I didn't have any example to teach me, um, you know, where that should come from or how that looked. And so I think it just carried on um, probably, you know, the rest of my life so far until, you know, I'm still trying to work on it, but, um, you know, it carried on for a good portion of my life. And I, I look back now because we're talking about changes after motherhood. And I, I remember feeling a certain way about my breasts before having babies. And I joke with my, my partner, cause my, with my husband, I'm like, God, I was so stupid. Like my, my breasts were so beautiful back then. Like, I wish I could have those boobs that I had then that I didn't like that, you know, instead of now, because I was totally, um, jaded. Like I, I didn't see the beauty in them that now that I recognize, you know, now that they're gone. And so I think, um, yeah, the journey just started really early, Iana. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And many, like, you, like we both mutually share, it is, it is something we do all go through. And the way we see ourselves, like when I look at this, like similarly, when I look at this picture of me as a teen and I'm like, well, damn, okay. I was like, boom, boom, boom. But, you know, I didn't value that. I really just thought I was fat, you know? So yeah, we don't understand or see ourselves um, the way that, others would and we are much harder on ourselves than we would be a friend you know so yeah yeah totally mm -hmm. yeah I was I I would say you know when you were talking about the time that you started noticing people noticing you I think I hadn't thought about that in probably decades you know but um yeah I remember being at a party at my aunt and uncle's house it was a swimming party and they had all these people over and they asked me to go play piano for their friends. And I was in my bathing suit and there were people literally ogling me. And that was the moment when I was like, like, first off, like scared. <laughs> and then secondly, like, huh, you know, just like a little bit, like, wh what does that even mean? Because I, I was probably 13 years old. Right. So that wasn't really something I thought was going to happen, but yeah, it's really weird how it's put on you. And suddenly you have this new awakening of like, wow, like there's something else to me, but I didn't really get to decide what it was almost. <laughs> yeah, indeed. 
Yep. <laughs> it's really sad, like that we don't even, I mean, I think one of the things I realized at that age, like you're talking about when you're young, um, when you're looking and you're feeling judged, like, you know, like people are observing you, um, one, the internal dialogue that you have. And then, and then after that, the decisions you make about yourself based on what other people, are, yeah, you know, what you think other people are thinking of you, you know, um, for me, it was like, I, I was comparing, like I said, my breast size to other girls. And then I was thicker than everybody else, but the boys liked it. So I just, you know, I just was like, yeah, this isn't, you know, I don't, I don't have any girlfriends really. I had just a few and I just primarily hung out with guys because I couldn't take what I thought those women were thinking of me. Wow. Yeah, indeed. I was actually just thinking like the, the opposite. So I was thinking of my, my story and, you know, I had a lot of mental health and like broken home stuff as a kid, but um, like I had a first husband that was like, I love you, but I'm not attracted to you because I was larger. And um, he never knew that before I met him, I actually had a pregnancy that I ended up having to terminate. And it's like, but he never knew that. Mm -hmm. So when he said that, and then, you know, as I left that marriage and was dating, I often, I always got, well, she's really funny and has a great personality, but not my type, but, but we're dating because she has really, and I'm like, you know, so ending those, but hearing that over and over and my story is kind of funny because I was the, my heaviest after having my daughter, I was 220. Um, and I remember specifically getting into the shower and seeing myself in the mirror and thinking, I love you. And it was the first time I ever thought that. And I stopped dead in my tracks and was like, oh, I've never thought about that naked looking at myself in the mirror. And I just did it at my heaviest. Um, and I was, and I was, that was a really cool moment. Um, and I, now it's funny because I've been on this health journey and have lost like 60 pounds and I'm um, feeling really healthy, but I'm having to like learn to love my body again because my butt is not where it used to be. And, you know, I'm losing things that I used to have. And so, but I'm happy that I feel good, but it's like, again, I'm like, oh, wow. How did my butt get way down there? Or where did it go? And it's like, I'm like, what are you talking about? You feel your health, like you're feeling good. So stop that. But um, I had so many people just saying like those tiny things and it really is like, oh, okay. Oh, oh, all right. All right. <laughs> it just starts to get in there. Yeah, it definitely does. Thank you for sharing that, for your, like sharing your journey of, you know, having the people obviously judge you and criticize you, especially people you love. It's definitely way more painful and impactful and sticks with you and then I was, I was gonna say to you, my husband is getting larger yeah. <laughs> we'll grab his stomach and be like look at me um and I didn't even I'm like don't do that because when I had my daughter I was like I'm no longer gonna talk negatively around myself and so she actually if I say the word fat she goes that's a bad word mom and I'm like I didn't even realize I taught her that but I'm like yeah it is yes mm -hmm. so I'm really happy about that <laughs> cool. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> you can totally relate to a lot of that. And then something else you, you mentioned, I'm going to point out later, is that like you mentioned, you were healthy or you're getting healthy and you also have body, like you're still struggling to relearn your body um, and we love it in that state. Um, and one thing I'm going to talk about later is how really external factors, like you doing something externally is not what helps you love yourself. So you doing that health journey, like, having that experience, awesome. And if your brain is not, you know, if you're not tuning yourself to love yourself, no matter what you do externally, it's not gonna work. So anyway, thank you all so much for your very deep and personal shares. Mm, mm, so lovely. So I have this little slide here, um, talking about, let me move this down. I have like a very large screen. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, about what I mentioned earlier, that self-hate is a multi-billion dollar industry. Like literally people are in boardrooms talking about products and ways to get you to, you know, change yourself. Um, and I put the ideals change, even though they are a construct, like ideals are made up by a, a collective agreement that makes them a construct. Um, even though they change, they're still a kind of some kind of a standard. And right now what we're seeing is kind of, you know, that's big butts, big boobs, like small waist, people, you know, really cinching their waist up, wearing um, all kinds of like body wear. 
Um, but yet, you know, they're all, I don't understand personally how you have a big butt and you manage to have a really thin waist. That's really confusing to me. <laughs> it just, it just, it just me personally. Um, but then we also profit, we really look to um, being perpetually young. Our society really does not want us to age. Like realistically, when you look at all the products that are anti-aging creams, like Botox, no getting smile lines, dye hair. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with doing these things. I'm just saying our, what our society believes is beautiful is being young. And because of that, we, are, we have lost middle-aged women we have lost older women and even our connection to those generations of women the wisdom that they have we don't get to tap into because we're so concerned about being young wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's crazy <pretty>, Biana. <laughs> actually <laughs> yeah okay i'll be quiet now but yeah no kidding i'm gonna be musing about that for a while mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Indeed. It's really sad for a culture. You know, I, I was blessed to have a dream with my grandmother last night. I mean, she's no longer with me, but um, what I do, I take that wisdom like deep to heart. <laughs> and it is so sad that we just, we are missing these women and their knowledge. But, um, and then going on to how, um, you know, women in, in the sense, our physical bodies, <laughs> Our beings were literally bought and purchased through marriage. We are we have been kind of conditioned over the years, right? Women with dowries or having to marry high and all this stuff that, you know, we don't even own our own being. And obviously in our in our world now, we are definitely moving towards that. But it's still it's still relevant in the back of our head that our bodies are not ours. They're for our man or they're for somebody else, you know. <sighs> and then I talked earlier about being subject to the male gaze, you know, that you can't be or express yourself in the way you want because you could be subject to what a man would think of you, you know, or what could they do if you're out here dressing scandalously. Um, and then something related to um, particularly having babies, media and celebrities promoting bounce back culture. You know, like, of course, these women that have millions of dollars are able to lose their baby weight in six weeks because they have personal chefs, because they have trainers, because they have doctors that are giving them their ideal supplementation for their body. Like, we cannot do that as normal women. It is not realistic. And, and then I just flipped porn in there just as a, like, this is what our men are seeing. They, most men are, are do engage in porn and um, it is a, again, another multi-billion dollar industry that's promoting, um, you know, a stereotype of what women are or how they should be. <laughs> I know. I see a few comments. Um, let's see. I had a therapist ask me to talk about three positive ways someone would view my gray hair and why I'm trying to hide it. And that was a real eye opener. Yeah. Indeed. I am, I, I totally agree. We should brace, embrace our gray hair. And then Tiffany said, not only that, but the belief that we must always be sexy for our partner, even if you are fully in motherhood, you must keep up your appearance. Yes. Right? Indeed. Great point. So here's, I don't know, we're, we might go really long. <laughs> I'll try to, I'll try to speed up, but I'm like, I'm thinking I'm on like slide 10 of like 40. So anyway. Loving your body is an act of rebellion, okay? Um, if you begin and put yourself out there and um, show up, like, I don't care what you think, that could be in the way you dress, you know, people who are goth or alternative styles of clothing, um, trans people, people who are really like, I am who I am, they are rebels. And in general, like, people don't necessarily want to be rebels because it makes you stand out like it's very it's a you have to push through something to love yourself and put yourself out there as I completely accept myself um and I've even like even as soon as this month well probably like last month my mother-in-law was frustrated and upset with me for a picture I posted the one I started this um powerpoint presentation with 
um, that I was a slut and that I had all these issues because I posted myself with the crown, with the robe, with a sliver of my belly shown. And that's just, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, it's just sad that like there's so there are people so not able to see, right? Not able to see the beauty in that because me standing out and showing up is not what they've been taught. Like we've been taught not to do that, not to stand out. And so to love yourself is an act of rebellion. <laughs> so let's see. Tiffany said, my mom did the same to me when I posted a similar photo, right? Yeah. People like to keep us tucked in neatly in a, in a little box that they can control too. That's another. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna run through a few of these and I want you to type yes in the chat if any of these resonate with you, okay? So what ha may have changed since having, having a baby? Hair changes, it's either thicker in pregnancy and then you have hair loss after, okay? Have you had skin changes? Changes in your face, spreading your nose, more body care, discoloration, stress marks. <laughs> okay, is stress marks appearing in obvious places and also very random places? Like I have a stretch marks on my belly button, like a bit of like, oh, yep. Okay, so yes, if you've uh, experienced increased breast size, some may love this, some may not at all, you know. I, I was, I already had big breasts, so getting bigger breasts was not attractive to me, okay? <laughs> my grandfather told me that my breasts looked like a watermelon once, and I was like, thanks, you should not be looking, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, but they're shrinking, yet sagging, yep, exactly, they got bigger, and then they, they shrink and sag. You can have larger nipples or larger areolas. Um, you know, most people's belly changes. It becomes softer, fluffier, saggy, has a new shape completely, or you have a scar now. You know, you have wider hips or hip issues, changes in your vagina. I'm just, there's just yeps, yeps, totally yes, all uh, like, you know, everybody's like, yes, all, all of these things have happened. Um, changes in your vagina from tenderness, tearing, pelvic floor, new back and body pains, like all these things literally everything about your body is subject to change when you have a baby. <laughs> All the pain, yeah. Hips will never be the same shape again. Yes, yes, the back pain, everything's so bad. Yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> it is fat faces indeed, yes, okay. And I'm sure there's more, I'm sure there's more um, that I haven't covered, but your body will change. And as something as a society, we don't address with, with women. We talk lots about having the baby and decorating for the baby and what you should have, but we don't address that your body will not be the same. No, we don't, Sarah says, we don't even acknowledge it. And then we leave women who are vulnerable, who have had all these hormones rushing through them, who have had a birth experience, who are up all night with a baby to deal with the fact that their bodies will never be the same. It's really no wonder that most people experience some kind of postpartum depression or self like um, lose that love or sense of self when they have a baby. So, um, and then I say, um, posted your thoughts and actions may have changed. Um, you may be sad at the change in your body. You may be uh, feeling shame in being partner I and mean, being intimate with your partner. You may ask for sex with the lights off. Um, you may be touched out from having constant contact from somebody that needs so much. You may feel literally gross from the amount of body fluids you're in contact with daily. It is a literal shit show. L literally every body fluid possible, okay, <laughs> during this time. Um, you may be worried about people seeing you breastfeeding. Um, you may have just in general low self-esteem and low confidence from sleep deprivation. You may hope for a quick fix, like I hope this does this for me, you know? And then you may judge yourself from people around you more, more because you're really present to that, you know? And then you're definitely gonna have the experience that your clothes don't fit. 
you know, let's see what other comments are saying. We put free ads in the mailbox to go to Kaya Bella for coolest cup thing instead of embracing the changes. Yes, right? That's that quick fix. That's that, that's that external. This will fix me, right? Uh, it touched out the, the clothes thing. Yes, I finally went to go buy new clothes. Jenny, your kid is, yeah, <laughs> it is. Like, it's crazy. Yep. Yeah. Joanne said, are you literally inside my brain? These are so true. Yeah, indeed, right? Yeah. So, so much changes. So how do we go about loving our bodies? All right. So we'll get into some practical stuff here. So first I recommend you start with the inside out, not the outside in. Um, society is really here to convince you that the outside in is a way to go. Okay. You're going to have this surgery. You got to have this diet. You're going to do this bag you're gonna do this thing going to buy this thing. Um, and then I call it, I will be happy when syndrome. I will be happy when I lose the weight. I will be happy when I um, I'm done breastfeeding. I will be happy when like, that's what this creates. And, and if you, if you've been in, this is what I believe um, Tiffany is at you. I don't remember, but was saying earlier about um, how, yes, even though oh, it was crystal that I was, you know, I've dieted, I've lost the weight, the outside in, but I still find myself percolating these thoughts of not loving myself, you know? And that's, that's the sadness about our society is that none of these things externally or even doing these things will fix. You can lose, like, you can lose a hundred self pounds and still be extremely sad. One, the effort it takes to get there. And then two, it's not the weight that's the issue. The weight is not what you don't love. Yeah. And I want to, just cause I like, I get that. And Sarah, and like, I am a coach to teach people what you just said. Like, it's all about mindset and what you think about and all how you love yourself. Um, but even though I know that because of society, you still have that, like, it's not even like a conscious thought almost. It's like, dink. Oh, whoa. Why did I think that? Like, I don't believe it like you know what I mean but it's that was kind of more where I was at but yeah I totally agree with that and that's what I help people every single day my job is to say you're not you know this diet you need to love yourself and, and have that upstairs stuff working <laughs> to mm -hmm. to your benefit and <laughs> mm -hmm. thank you thank you for clarifying it yes exactly so next specifically talking about retraining your brain okay um so I, I you heard my body story um I, I really recommend that we journal about how you got here to where you are today like take some time look at over the years how has your body story changed what events made it a major impact in the, the changes of your thoughts um and then reflect on those things like why did you feel that way? What came up for you around this time? What story did you create around that situation? Um, and then next, as you are present and aware of where of how you got here, thank your body for all it has done for you. And I, I ask people to start with this small thing. Like if you cannot really address like your body as a whole, realize that your actual existence is a miracle you being alive, you existing, <laughs> okay? I put on here, it took thousands of people literally to survive life and have sex for you to exist. In 10 generations, that's 1,024 people, okay? And then you yourself have been going on to become pregnant, which is a fucking miracle as well, given birth, and you've passed the blueprint of life, this miracle of existing onto another person. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a picture right now. This is my family. This is five generations of women in my family. This is my, my grandmother and the grandma left is no longer still alive, but her mother is. My kids have their great grandmother. They, have, they can see five generations in their family. And it's such a beautiful thing to think, like even just, Five more generations after that, there's a thousand people. 
accept that you are a miracle for being here, for existing. Start there. <sighs> I was, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cry again. <laughs> mm. Okay. So once you've dealt with the internal mind journey, uh, we can do some work. I, and, and I like to call this one tuning your environment to loving yourself. Okay. Um, Cause again, I believe that anything we do to our physical body, like buying something or having some procedure, doesn't really work, but you can teach yourself to be in your body again and being in your body, surrounding your body with pleasant experiences will help you to learn to love your body. You will feel good about your body because your body feels good. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go through a little sensorial play. Um, in my company, Desiring Me, um, really the, the kind of pillar uh, of my company is teaching people to, to re-embrace their senses, to get back into their bodies. And what that means is like, we, we spend so much time out here helping other people. We don't listen to our own needs and desires and what our body wants and needs from us. And your body's communicating to you all the time. Most of the times as mom, we, sh we shut that off. We shut off that switch of, I need this, I want this, I need time, I need space. We shut that off because we have the needs of others so prevalent in our minds. And so here's some ways that you can start to indulge that. So sight, um, go out in nature, observe the beauty around you, you know, make your home pleasing to the eye, um, see new things, um, travel if you can, you know, more having more experiences. And then scents. Oils, incense, flowers, food, the smell of coffee. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, yeah, I need like that. Smells bring us into our bodies and they remind us of our memories and our lives like nothing else does. And this is my favorite, my favorite way to indulge. Um, I buy flowers for myself literally every week. Um, I have a set of cow lilies downstairs in the kitchen right now. Um, and then back there, that little blue thing that going, that's my essential oil diffuser. I put on lavender so I can be chill for this, you know. Um, I put on oils to sleep. I love, you know, body butters that smell good, shower things that smell good, like cooking, Indian food, things that just smell great, okay? <laughs> oh, man. And then sound. Um, sounds and hearing things also really bring us back to our body, listening to empowering music, music to keep you calm, blasting your favorite song on repeat over and over again. Um, I also put attend a sound healing. Um, I have a few bowls that I use. Sound healing really does affect, um, well, music in general, you are vibration, okay? You're full of water and thus your body vibrates. So going to a sound healing where someone's using bowls or gongs or chimes or different levels of sound, really does um, translate and transmute the frequency of your body to a higher, more appreciative existence. So, and then enjoying the sounds that are around you, you know, nature, your animals, running water, your kids' laughter, and the quiet. And then taste. I have this really um, funny story. <laughs> uh, so my kids eat all my strawberries. Every time I get them, they just kill the strawberries and I never get to have any. So one night I had had groceries delivered late and they didn't know I had strawberries. So I got a strawberry and I took the strawberry and I ate it for a whole song, like so seductively. Like I licked and sucked and smelled and just enjoyed that strawberry so thoroughly. <laughs> it was literally the best experience of my life. Like. I have never tasted anything better. <laughs> so um, look it up. It's called central fruit eating. I don't know. It's really a thing, but um, enjoying, like, like I said, your senses want to have new sensations. Your body wants to have new sensations. So savor them, you know? 
Uh, so that's what I do. I like love to taste new things. I eat what I crave. Um, and I don't know, that's just, that just works for me. So if you want to see the video, I'll post it later. <laughs> and then feeling, you know, learning what your body likes to feel. Okay. Like different textures, exploring soft, rough, sharp, smooth. And then we all know like how pleasant it is to kiss a baby. Like I know you've kissed your baby a hundred times in a day, you know, it's just so sweet to like feel their lips on you. So yeah, like do things and feel things, explore all the feelings. Um, and then change your environment or what you're exposed to. Um, so unfollow people in your social media that you find make you feel jealous. Follow people that inspire you or are like you. Wear things that only make you feel good. If you're wearing some jeans and these jeans are too tight and they don't make you feel comfortable, do not wear those jeans, okay? <laughs> um, create sacred spaces in your home that fosters an experience you love. And doing all the things above, indulging your senses and all these will create a higher vibration in your environment for you to feel good. Um, I didn't add this in here, but also self-pleasure. <laughs> self-pleasure is really important to, to learning your, and feeling good about your body. So taking some time to explore your body in that way as well. Okay, we're going to do a little touch experiment. All right, so, you know, get your journals down. All right, so we're going to start with, I want you to grab your body in disgust. So just like pinch and like smush. Ugh, this is so gross. Ugh, it's so big. Mm, I don't like that. Mm, punch yourself. Doesn't feel good. <laughs> okay. Or maybe you might like it. Maybe I, I'm not sure. <laughs> but so see how that feels in your body. All right. And now I want you to poke your body like you're judging judging your body mm. it's so fluffy everything just sinks in for like three inches okay <laughs> all right now i want you to tickle yourself like you might a baby lightly playfully mm. that's giving me like chills in my body that feels good Mm. Okay. Whew. So now I want you to take your hands, rub them together. You got some magic butter in here. All right. And you're going to take this butter and you're going to just lather it all over your skin, nice and slowly. Mm. Just give that love all over yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see everybody else. So if you're enjoying that, let me know. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a different vibe. You know, each of those types of experiences and sensations create different experiences for you. And when we give ourselves like loving and compassionate touch, you know, this is us loving ourselves. I mean, and some of you may like, like other things, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying that excluding that, you know, some people like work for things, um, but the way we touch ourselves and explore our bodies, like taking on, how does it feel to feel good, to love yourself? Hmm. Thank you for playing that game with me guys. <laughs> so next, um, my next tip is to date yourself. This is COVID edition. <laughs> Okay, uh, so get to know who you are alone. What do you want and desire? Dream big, you know. What, what would you have if you had no limitations like money, self-esteem? Self what do you want, you know? Um, and then these are some like practical things you can do. Make your favorite meal, watch a movie. Write yourself a love letter, take a goddess bath, 
indulge in a treat. Have some wine and drink it like you're royal. Okay. Buy some flowers and chocolate for yourself. Mm, I told you I buy myself flowers weekly and I've been doing intermittent fasting just because I, I actually haven't wanted to eat food in a while. But the first thing I eat is chocolate. <laughs> I eat a piece of dark chocolate to break my fast. All right. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed, I'm just indulge every chance I have the opportunity to. And then I'll hear for the self-pleasure. Enjoy self-pleasure with no goal of orgasm. Take your time and love on your body. Sarah's down with that. Okay, good. All right. So then if you must do something externally to change your perspective of your body, these are the ways to do it. And it is confronting AF. Okay. <laughs> The first thing you want to do is mirror work. So you all are moms, so I know you love my like completely jacked up bedroom. So like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't care. This is my level of, I don't care what you think about me. Really? This is how I am. My house is a mess and that's okay. <laughs> okay. Really how, I, I mean, I don't know, but this is definitely how my house is every day, unless I actually actively clean it up to try to pretend like it isn't. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, honestly, <laughs> this is your house too, right? It really is. Like, this is how our house, like, this is real life. But I'll tell you, the first time I did mirror work, um, like, truly did it, um, what, yeah, yeah, we do that too. I was in a self-development program, and I was in a group of 10 people, and we were randomly in this schoolhouse with these mirrors, and they had us um, looking in ourselves in front of all these people with these prompts that were like really emotional and hard. And then we would spend like five minutes looking in the mirror and then like five minutes raging or something, like doing some kind of emotion to let that go. And it was the most confronting. Yes, Louie Hayes. Yep, she's in here. Exactly. Um, she It was the most confronting thing I've ever done in my life. To one, be witness to really actually looking at myself genuinely, having to look at myself and then doing it in front of people. Ah, it changed my life. It changed my life. Um, but it was an hour of that, back and forth, back and forth, looking in the mirror, release emotions, look in the mirror, release emotions, look in the mirror, release emotions. Um, and it really made a difference. You cannot hide who you are in the mirror. When you look in the mirror, it reflects back to you all the things you think about yourself, positive and negative. You immediately look at and see the things you don't like. <laughs> okay, Joanne. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, you see those flaws. It's like looking at your insides. Like It's really like looking at your inner critic and what you really think about yourself. And it really has a, it has a heyday, look in the mirror. It's really hard to do this for most women, especially after having a baby. And then the next thing, so I'm sure something we all know about is affirmation. So in that giant mirror I just posted a few years ago, I actually took a dry erase marker and I wrote affirmations all over the mirror. I wrote them in the mirror and I stood in them at least five minutes every single day. I just stood there and looked at them and looked at myself, naked or clothed, whatever. But I made a point to just do that. And you can put affirmations anywhere. I like when we started this call, somebody said, or I was on another call actually right before this, and they had an affirmation app pop up. So you can create them on your phone, put them around your house and post a note at eye level, but pick some that really resonate with you. Like something that you feel deeply connected to, not just like, oh yeah, I love my body. No, I love my body because of this, or I don't know, but pick some that you resonate with and that, that, that you feel like will really make an impact on how you feel about yourself. And then move your body. So um, exercise has already has so many benefits to, that promote um, good mental health. Um, I personally encourage moms to dance just because you can do this with your kids. Like you can do this at any moment, at any time throughout the day. Um, and dance without purpose, without trying, you don't have to have a routine. It could be silly, it could be serious. Um, 
and the kids love it too. So, you know, it, it really does a good job of helping with a shitty day. And I pole dance, okay? So that's what I do for my type of dance. <laughs> that my kids can remember remembers me dancing at Wendy's. Awesome, yes. Dance will lift your endorphins, raise your vibration. And it, it has the benefit of being good for, you know, actually your body, your heart health, all that stuff. So, and then if you have the means to do this, I highly, highly recommend doing professional boudoir. Now, I would have never posted these pictures. <laughs> well, maybe the first one, maybe the other ones, but the first one, definitely not. Um, but because this photographer, they're so skilled in their eyes, like seeing through a lens that I wouldn't normally see myself through. I'm able to go, wow, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. I am beautiful. And then share this with people that you know, like are in your corner. Because even if you like, I can go, oh my gosh, like look at all the cellulite, look at all the rolls, look at all the stuff, you know? I could do that. And I'm sure I did do that. Because self-love, by the way, um, just like uh, Crystal mentioned, it's not, it's not like, oh, boom, I love myself every day, you know? We, we can still, yes, Sarah Thorpe, exactly. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, we still can see ourselves and have those like reactions. You know, this is not a, a it's not a fix all. You're, you're gonna still have moments where you have struggles or where you see things or you're having a bad day and then you just shit on yourself, you know? Like it's completely cyclical, li not linear. I don't know the word for that, but you know, it's not fixed. But if you have the means to do this, I would say do it. Have a professional shoot you some boudoir photos. And, um, and if you really don't have the means, you can definitely do it yourself. All right, get in touch with your BBW. I don't know if you've heard that Drake song, I like my girls BBW, which stands for big, beautiful women. <laughs> now, now I claim this fully, but uh, what I'm talking about here is your breasts, your belly and your womb space, okay? <laughs> So your breasts, again, another picture I would never have posted, but um, your breasts have done a lot for you. And your breasts, if you know anything about chakras, you have your heart chakra here. Your breasts and your arms are extensions of your heart chakra. They are givers of love. Your breasts give love to your baby. They give love and pleasure to yourself. There's an intimate connection with your breasts and your, and your vagina, your, sexual arousal. And so give yourself, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, give and receive, this is exactly. Give your breast gratitude. If you breastfed, they have literally nourished a child. You know, and for the most part, all of us enjoy a beautiful sensation from our breasts. So if you, like I do a daily massage practice with my breasts where I just take some time and just rub them just to get connected to myself as a woman, just to really get into my body. So, and like I told you guys, I did pierce my nipples, <laughs> even though they, they are nice and saggy and nice and big, I, I don't care. They, I love them so much. <laughs> okay. Your belly. So we talked a little bit about some changes that can happen, have happened with your belly. This is me with my second daughter. Um, and your belly goes through the most transformation, right? It literally houses this human. It grows them from the seed. It has suffered the deepest impact on your self-loathing more than likely. Mm. So how are you treating it? How are you treating your belly? Again, when we talk about chakra systems, your, your belly holds your solar plexus, which is your self. Your belly is your identity. It is your self. It is who you are and how you show up in the world. So how are you treating it? So I want us to pause right now. I want you to put your hand on your belly. Close your eyes. And I want you to take some deep breaths into your belly. Okay. 
So keep breathing. And as you breathe, think about all of the good food that has landed in this belly. The delicious homemade meal, the delights of sugar, <laughs> fancy dinners out, warm coffee or tea in the morning. Think of the insanely intricate process that your stomach goes through to process this food into nutrients to then separate the waste. All this work that you consciously do not even think about, it just does it automatically because it loves you and it wants to keep you alive. I mean, think about the toxins that your body has absorbed, maybe like from alcohol or other substances we may have done in our lifetime or still do, I mean, I do in times of COVID. <laughs> oh. Now think of the lives you've created from here. Those little miracles, seeds that you've grown for almost a year. The literal miracle that you housed here and brought to life. This is you right here in your belly. This is you. This is the part of you that needs the most love and acceptance. It only wants you well. Thank your belly. <laughs> Thank your belly for all it's done, all it's processed, all it's dealt with. Let it know you're sorry for not understanding all the myriad of things that it's done for you. Ask for forgiveness. And, and give it a big, big hug. Mm. Take one more breath and open your eyes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Belly. Thank you, ladies, for embracing your belly. Mm. Anyway, I hope you I hope you love that meditation. <laughs> Just a quick little impromptu. I, I think it's really important that we spend time there. So this is the last slide for today or ish. <laughs> but the last thing I talked about is womb space in the BBW acronym. And I could I could spend literally a whole retreat talking about how to love your womb or your yoni, or your, your whole feminine reproductive system and the beauty that is there. You know, our wombs hold a lot. They do hold our babies. They hold trauma and shame. And honestly, talking about this part of our body is, is taboo sometimes. And then that leads it to being very mysterious because we don't have open conversations about our vaginal health. So I believe the essence of what makes us women of our feminine power is here, our passion, our creativity is here, the source of our energy and our rhythms. And oops, I recommend you start the process of, you know, I recommend a deeper dive into this area. And um, this is the work I'm really committed to doing in this world as well. It's helping people process what's happened to them in their, in their sexuality, in their femininity. So um, that's it for now. Tiffany, this is the work I'm currently exploring. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Iana. That's, this is, uh, <laughs> I'm having my own deep thoughts over here. So I apologize if I'm being kind of quiet, but um, thank you. This has really given, I think all of us a lot to think about. Um, I'm going to pop us off Facebook Live now. So if there's any questions we want to ask um, here on the Zoom, please feel free.